So now a lot of times when we um, we're trying to seek the Father's will for our life, we want to know what the Father would have for us to do. A lot of times we make decisions, brothers and sisters. You got to understand this. If you don't understand this, you won't understand life. Just because a person is a believer, it does not mean that the Father has joined it. And through the permissible will, there is a lot of struggle why because the perfect will of the father when the father gives you a vision and i'm learning this because i made these mistakes my whole life we got to take our time and sit back and wait and say father i will not move until you show me the way the father he is the one that has established the time so when we seek the father right when we follow what the father has called us to do we then find us of what in time and in in time we find us of what in his perfect will at 49 years of my life it took me 49 years of my life to realize that the father has his time and you cannot move ahead of time because if you move ahead of time you're going to make shipwreck though it tarry wait don't jump the gun. Oh, brother, you don't know. My biological clock is ticking. I'm getting older. I'm getting gray in my beard. Getting gray in my hair. I'm getting old. Getting past my childbearing years. I got to do something quick. <laughs> he said, though it tarries, wait for it. Don't jump the gun. Don't get out there and say, oh, brother, you know, I, I just got you. I'm tired of being alone, you know. You got to be careful and prayerful because when you start feeling lonely you open yourself up to compromise you compromise yeah okay well i don't want to be lonely so i'm going to pick this person uh, i just don't want to be by myself i'm gonna that if it means that i have to be by myself and die alone i'll do that rather than compromise because i'm lonely the father is speaking to me and speaking to you that listen oh we lonely we need companionship oh what did the father say to, to adam he says it's not good that man should be alone so i will make him a help me so but here's what the father did not do he didn't put a bunch of women out there and say okay adam you choose the one that you want the father said it's not good that man should be alone so I, he said, the father said, I, not Adam going out grabbing this woman. Oh, she look good. She's Coca-Cola bottom shape. 36, 24, 36, tall, dark, and beautiful, dark, and lovely. No, he didn't say that. But it said that the father said, I will make him a help meet. Oh, I understand you are alone. I understand that. It's not good for you to be alone. But wait a minute. Hold on one second. Hold up one second. Because you're alone, don't mean you go out and do something stupid. Connect yourself to somebody who you're not supposed to be with because you're alone. Or give your body to somebody. Hop in the bed with somebody because you're alone. The father didn't say, it's not good for you to be alone, for you to just, oh, just have free sex. What did the father tell the woman at the well? He said, oh, you have had five husbands and the one you're with now is not your husband. I know we, we've commonly thought that meant, but think about it now. Could he have been saying to her, that is not your man. You are not his rib. So the father took the rib and he did what? He made a woman. And then after he took the rib from Adam, he made the woman, and then what did the father do? He, the father, brought the rib to Adam. Sisters, you are supposed to be brought by the Most High to your Adam. And the reason why we have the problems today is because many have not been brought to Adam by the Most High. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh why because this is his rib 
that the Father has did what? Brought to him, and he did what? Identified that this is what? My rib, my help me. And Sariah, Abram's wife, took Hagar, her maid the Egyptian, and gave her to her husband, Abram, to be his wife. So she did what? She was his rib, but what did she do? She was dominating Abram and caused what? Shipwreck. Is your wife dominating you, telling you what to do? So when things happen in our life, it's not the Father. It's because we did not walk in His perfect will. We took it upon ourselves to make a decision to do that in which we thought was right. And now the repercussions is because of the decisions that we made out of His will. And I see at 49 years of age that because I did not wait for his perfect will and I'm in the situation where I am at today. When you learn, when you accept, when you understand that the father's perfect will is what he has for you, then you will do that what he has ordained for you in perfection and not in permission. Acknowledge the father and the father, he will do what? Direct your path. So, did the light come on yet? You are where you are because why? You didn't wait on the father. Oh, but he was a good man or she was a good woman, but you didn't wait on the father because you're in the situation you're in because you did not wait on the father. That's why you're divorced. That's why I'm divorced because we didn't wait on the father. They were good people, but you didn't wait on the father. It had nothing to do with them being evil, wicked, or anything of that nature. You were not in the will of the Father. I was not in the will of the Father. And since we're not in the will of the Father, guess what? We had the divorce court. So he was 86 years old when he had a son. I'm 49. So I have plenty, plenty of time left to have a son. I have no biological sons or daughters. I'm only 49. My rib is going to give me a son. So, if you're not capable of giving me a son, then you're not my rib. And I understand that now.